What's happening, you animals? Today we'll be doing an oil change on one of the new twins, the 2022 BRZ. And as a bonus, we'll be sticking a probe somewhere where the sun don't shine to see if we can find any of that RTV that's been storming the headlines this past month. Without further ado, let's jump straight into this thing. So unless you guys have been living under a rock for the past month, I'm sure you guys have seen headlines about the RTV issues on the new BRZ and GR86 motors. Apparently Subaru has applied too much RTV to the oil pan and timing covers, causing that RTV to then fall into the bottom of the oil pan, to then getting stuck in the pickup tube, leading to oil starvation issues, leading to blown engines. So once we get the oil drained out of this thing, we're gonna stick an endoscope in there and see if we can find any of that infamous RTV. Let's go see what tools we need for the job. All right, today we'll be using some of that good, good, good Redline 0W20. Before you criticize me for using 0W20, it's what the manual asks for, and with summer creeping up to a close, I see no point going to a heavier oil, something like 5W30. Next, you'll need a oil filter. This is the OEM Subaru part number. It's the same exact filter that goes on the VA and BBWRX. Then you'll need a little crush washer for the drain plug, a 17 mil, something to drain the oil into, and as always, shop towels come in very handy. Now let's get to the job. First things first, you're gonna wanna remove the oil fill cap and just let it rest. This way the oil will drain out quicker and while you're up here, might as well remove the oil filter as well. And you can grab a shop towel and wipe off the residual oil that's up here. And look at that, we're all done up here. Now, jack up the car and I'll see you guys underneath. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> oops, sorry guys, forgot to mention you'll need a 10 mil to get the oil drain cover off. I went ahead and loosened the bolts already for the sake of the shortness of this video. And voila, once you remove this, you'll have a oil drain bolt right here. Next, position whatever you're gonna catch your oil with to, you know, catch the oil. I already loosened my drain bolt. It looks like we already have a little bit of drippage. Oh boy, this always the least fun part for me at least because I seem to never be able to not make a mess. Oh, we're close. Oh, we're so close. Hey, none hit the floor. That's an achievement for me. Now while this drains, I'm gonna go and replace the little crush washer on this bolt and yeah. Here's a closer look at the drain bolt washer. They tend to be pretty on there, especially when they're new. So just grab a little flat head and pry it off. And once you have your new one, make sure the flat side goes onto the bolt head and this will be ready to go back in. After, of course, we get to have some fun with the endoscope. Looks like the oil is just about done getting drained. So I'm gonna go set this thing up and then we'll go have ourselves a little look-see. All right, well, I have the endoscope all set up. Let's see what we can find. All right. Let's look at the oil pan to block seal. Oh, there we are. You guys see that in between the silver of the aluminum and the black of the oil pan? See this gray line going around? That is a pretty excessive amount of RTV. I mean, I've definitely seen worse, but this is not what you would expect coming from an OEM manufacturer. And now this black tube right here is our pickup. I don't know if I'll be able to get inside it. It's kind of an odd angle. Um, I'll try in a little bit, but let's talk a little bit more about this. So 
The danger of this is, is if it flakes off, it'll get sucked up in this pickup tube and then start clogging it. Then the engine won't be able to deliver oil to the rest of the motor and kablam it'll go. So as you can see, it's pretty thick and excessive, pretty much all the way around or literally all the way around. So yeah, you know, oil pants motor, like it's a tight tolerance. You really don't need this much RTV whatsoever. This is absolutely overkill. Oh, it froze on me. Hello? Hello? Let's hope that saves. It'd be real unfortunate if that doesn't save. All right, so the battery on the scope had died. I just charged it up a little bit and we're going in for round two. Gonna see if I can try and finagle it into the pickup. Fingers crossed. Now that we're done horsing around in there, time to grab your drain bolt and throw it back in. All right, once the drain bolt's in, you're gonna wanna torque it to 29 foot-pounds, technically 28.9, but let's be honest, what is 0.1 of a foot-pound gonna do, really? So, got my handy torque wrench. I got that thing about as hand-tight as possible. Let's see here. Quarter of a turn, another quarter. All right, so basically once you got it about as hand tight as possible, about another three quarter of a turn and you should be right there. Now lower the car and we're gonna add our oil. Scratch that, don't forget to put the access panel back on. Now we have the car back on the ground. Go ahead and grab your new oil filter, dab your finger with a little bit of new oil, and rub it around the rubber seal. Time to spin this baby on. Once you get to the point of some friction, just give it about three quarters of a turn and should be fine. And now it's just time to add our oil. Now that our new filter's in, it's a good time to add the oil. Funnel will come in very handy, especially in this car since the oil fill neck is very short and a little bit in the engine bay. The manual calls for 5.3 quarts. I accidentally only grabbed five. That still should put us somewhere between the high and low mark, but after I'm done filming this, I'm gonna go grab another quart off the shelf and top her up till it's up to the full mark. Now that all the oil's in, obviously just screw your fill cap back on. Then, I'm gonna grab a shop towel, pull the dipstick, wipe it off. I'm gonna dip it back in, pull it out. And look at that, seems like we are, come on. Come on, Sony, please focus. And look at that, looks like we are just short of the full mark. So this is the full mark. The one you see right here is obviously the low mark. So I need to go grab another quart and just top it off a little bit. All right, well, there you guys have it. 22 BRZ slash GR86 oil change. Super easy to do, saves you money, ensures that high quality oil is put in the car and ensures that it is obviously done correctly. Subaru recommends to do an oil change every seven and a half thousand miles or seven and a half months, depending on whichever comes first. If you do regularly track the car or destroy canyons on a nightly basis, it is recommended to cut that down to more like 4,000 miles or four months. Also, whichever comes first, 
And yeah, overall, you know, it's just an oil change. Nothing special about it. It is a real shame that Subaru did really drop the ball with the RTV. I mean, other than that, it's an absolute amazing car. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a old school car kind of guy. I like cars that are very engaging to drive. And when I heard that this thing comes with electronic steering, all my hopes for it had really died until I actually drove it. It is actually very engaging to drive, very pleasing to drive. It just absolutely holds on to corners with all that it can. I mean, yeah, an absolute blast to drive. So yeah, and I mean, hopefully Subaru and Toyota learn their lesson. And I hope that new BRZs that are being put together at the factory right now are not gonna be shipped off to somebody with excessive RTV on it like this one was. But yeah, anyways guys, if you enjoyed today's video, hit that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and let me know in the comments if you'd like to see a video of us taking off the oil pan, taking a better gander at the oil pickup and redoing the RTV ourselves. And yeah, that's about all guys. I'll catch you in the next one.